Now that we've selected an algorithm, it's time to start training a model. So what are the key ingredients to model training? Well, number one is the algorithm. We've just seen a few considerations that we need to take into account when it comes to algorithm selection. The second ingredient is going to be our loss or cost function, which is a function that compares the prediction that we get from the algorithm to the true underlying outcome in the case of a supervised learning setting. The final ingredient now is going to be the optimization method, which is going to be a method that helps us minimize the error. So we're going to have some predictions and we're going to have some true outcomes. And the optimization method is trying to help us to get the predictions as close as possible to the true outcomes. So the goal of any parametric model then is to find weights or parameters that minimize the loss on the data. And we're going to have to evaluate that. And to do that, we have a test or holdout set. Coming back to our regression example here. So we have the target that we want to predict, which is the health score. And here we're showing one feature, age. And what you can see here is all of these individual dots, they correspond to records of age that we have in our tabular data set on the left hand side. And then the orange line is a proposed prediction. So this is coming from the algorithm. This would be coming from the linear regression, which would put a straight line through our data points. And we can see that not all the data points are perfectly on the line. That's not possible. We have an error between the prediction, which is the line and the true underlying data points. So every single data point will have an error associated to it. So you can see here error subscript I referring to the individual errors per data point. So the second ingredient then is going to be a loss function. So we've just seen on the previous slide an example of linear regression. That was our proposed algorithm. Now we need to quantify the errors. We've seen how to do it visually, but we need an equation that helps us quantify how big exactly that error is. And one commonly used loss function or cost function is the sum of squared errors, which is a numeric value that measures the performance of a regressor when the model output is a continuous numerical value between minus infinite and plus infinite. And we have the expression here. So C of W, cost function as a function of the weights, is going to be a sum over all of the data points from I to N and the delta between the underlying true value and the predicted value y hat. And you would also notice that there is a square here. So we want to penalize data points that are further away more. So this is what the square helps us achieve. And keep in mind now that the y hat, that's the algorithm that we're proposing, is the linear regression. So if we were to write it out, we would get w0 plus w1 x1, w2 x2, all the way to wn xn. So what we want to do now to improve the fit to get a better line of prediction is we want to minimize this sum of squared errors, the value that we get from calculating the sum over all of the differences between the true data points and the predicted data points squared. So that value should be minimal and then we have the best line of fit. Before moving on to the final ingredient, which is going to be the optimization method, we're going to have a quick look at a classification example as well. So here we have a classification example where we're going to predict approved or denied as a binary outcome, yes or no. And on the right hand side, we have a chart that illustrates the approved and denied area. So everything on the right hand side of the line, everything that's shaded in orange, that's going to be approved. And all the data points that fall to the left, those will be denied. So what does the cost function look like in the case of a classification example? Well, first we need to talk about the algorithm that we want to use in a bit more detail. So we only really know linear regression up to this point. And what I'm showing on this slide is a quick way to get from a linear regression, which is predicting a continuous numerical value, to a classifier. And we're going to achieve this with the help of the so-called sigmoid function. So the idea here is to take the sigmoid function, which is 1 over 1 
plus e to the minus y. And what this will help us do is it will squishify the values that range from minus infinite to plus infinite into a range of 0 and 1. So it will take everything that we have from the linear regression and turn it into this S-shaped curve. The final thing that we need to do now is we need to add a decision boundary because the values are still going to be continuous. They're going to be probability values now, but we still need to introduce a threshold above which we will say class 1. And the threshold that's commonly used is 0.5. So you see here a line at 0.5 and everything that's greater or equal to 0.5 will be rounded up to class 1. So a yes or approved in our example and everything that's below 0.5 will be rounded down to 0 or denied. So now we can start talking about the loss function and a commonly used loss function in the case of classification is going to be the log loss. So the log loss now is going to be a numeric value that measures the performance of a binary classifier when the model output is a probability value that ranges between 0 and 1. And that is exactly what we've seen on the previous slide. The sigmoid function is going to give us exactly that, a value between 0 and 1. So we can now use log loss to quantify the loss. So here we have it. We have our loss function here. We have the sum, again, over all of the data points, y for the true values minus log of y hat. So this is going to be a little bit of a trick that we need to use here. And what we can see here is the full expression then becomes minus the sum over y times log y hat plus 1 minus yi times log of 1 minus y hat i. So there are a few things happening here, because keep in mind the yi, those are now going to be approved or denied. So yi is either going to be 0 and 1. So actually the terms will disappear depending on whether or not we match the true value. So let's talk a little bit about optimization methods. As I explained earlier, optimization in this context here means minimizing the loss function. And we need to distinguish between what we are doing for regression and classification examples and parametric and non-parametric algorithms. So for regression, it would usually refer to finding weights or Ws that result in the lowest error value possible. So we had the example of linear regression, which has W0 plus W1, X1, W2, X2, and so forth. So clearly we can choose these Ws, and the idea is to use an optimization method to find the best possible combination of Ws. In the case of classification, obviously we've seen an example of log loss just now, where we also have parameters that we can try to find, but there also exist other rules regarding to finding splitting rules that minimize the impurity or error that is found. So here this will come down to which type of algorithm we're using and what we're trying to minimize. So optimization methods, let's talk a little bit more about what they are and how they work. So we already said they are generally methods that help us update or find weights or find splitting rules. And what we could try, for example, would be an exhaustive search where we just try all possible values of W. In practice, that's not really going to work for us because that's just computationally too inefficient. That would take too long and there could be infinitely many W values to try out. So instead, we would want to use something like gradient descent, which is going to be an iterative updating of the W values. And that is actually a method that is used very commonly in machine learning. And once again, you see dot 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 here because there are actually many more optimization methods out there as well. So it really comes down to the algorithm that you're choosing, the underlying data that you have, and then that will inform which optimization method will work best. Obviously, there are a lot of considerations on computational efficiency for this as well. And as already mentioned, gradient descent tends to come out on top. So here we have a few more details about gradient descent. How does the gradient descent method work in a nutshell? So we just said it's a method that helps us find W values. And how does it do that? Well, it uses the gradients. So a little bit of a throwback here to linear algebra. 
So gradient descent is going to be a method that uses gradients to find the minimum of a function iteratively. And we take steps, and this will be proportional to the gradient size towards the minimum of the function, which is going to be the opposite direction of the gradient itself. So gradient will point in the direction of the steepest increase, so we want to move in the opposite direction. The gradient descent algorithm then is starting with an initial point w, and then we want to find an update such that we start from the current w position and we take a step times the gradient. So here we also see step size or learning rate if you're coming from neural nets. So this is actually going to be a parameter again that we can choose and we can try many different values of that as well. So this was gradient descent in a nutshell. There are actually many more considerations when it comes to implementing this in practice, like how do you initialize the w's, how big do you make the step size. So these things are out of scope, but I encourage you to look up more details about gradient descent. Let's have a quick look at gradient descent in practice. So here we have our linear regression algorithm. The w0 parameter is going to be our intercept on the y-axis. And then we have w1 as the only other parameter. So in our case, that was the weight for the age feature. And then in the third box, you can see the error, so sum of squared error. And as the w0 and w1 get updated, we also can see the error going down. So here we implemented gradient descent and you can see the number of iterations in the top right corner. And as we get more and more iterations, we get closer and closer to the minimal error point possible. So here we just stop at 600 iterations. We could let this going for a little bit further and then would hope that the error goes down a little bit more. But this was just to illustrate what gradient descent would look like in the case of linear regression. Just so you know, for linear regression, we can actually also use the normal equation and analytically find the w values, but that's not usually the case.